Gauri, you're a director who likes to take her time. You debuted in 2012 with the wonderful English English, followed it up four years later, 2016, with Dear Zindagi. And since then, I see ads that, that you directed, uh, but there hasn't been a film. Why do your stories take so long to emerge? So, Anupama, you know how long it takes to make a film, and especially if you're writing your own films. And I, I have written my own films until now. So from the time you start writing till, till the promotions, I'm even going there and the aftermath of a film <laughs> release and everything, I just feel like I need to like massively hibernate post that. I need to extricate myself from that world for a while because I've... From the world in the film or the world of film at large? World of film at large, okay. absolutely. And the, my process that I've gone through in the film. So I need to get back into life as such, not that that wasn't, that's a very exciting life, but because I have blinkers on while I'm in it, so I'm totally only into it. I need to get out, meet my friends, see the world and see some other places, travel, read, watch stuff. Nourish yourself. Nourish myself, just, just, just be, you know, just like be able to breathe and absorb and then somewhere through that process, I think I find my voice about what I need to do next. What is it I want to really express? So in and how I end up with a subject and which is why probably it takes long is what do I really want to say which is not being said and which some something is kicking me to then really want to do it. And that's when I set out to do that because uh, it needs to also kind of resonate with my life at that moment and what is a topic or emotion that really is dominating me. Like five years ago, I could be passionate passionate about something or two years ago and that does not resonate anymore. So I think somehow it takes so that kind of time. Gauri, when you, when you are in this following mode, uh, <laughs> do, you, do you ever feel insecure? Do you ever get scared that if I don't say something, mm. people might forget who I am? I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely, in fact. I find fame uh, yeah, quite distasteful. So I think if, if at all I, I want to be seen, known should be through the work. And if I'm not doing something, it's all right to not be, not be top of mind. Yes, I may feel like, oh my God, I hope they don't forget that by the time the next film comes that who I was and I didn't make right. a decent film the last right, time. Right. So that may be a bit, but not so much to affect me that I need to rush with what I want to do. And uh, no, no, that doesn't uh, and really bother me. You writing your own material, is this um, something that, so it has to come from you? Or do you think, have you ever sort of seen a story that you might want to make that somebody else has done? No, I'm not close to that at all. I mean, it's just two features that I've done and I've wanted to express what I want to express because I even made a film because I wanted to say something. Right. So if there happens to be a story, a book or an idea that resonates with me and I feel, oh my God, and it kind of um, coincides with what I'm feeling passionate about in that time frame of my life, then of course, and it just needs to like sort of knock me out a little for me to consider it. But so far it hasn't happened. Uh, to be fair, I haven't been so open also. It's not like I've said, come on, people bring me a few scripts yeah. and stuff. But whatever has come has not really spoken to me. <laughs> Gauri, you of course started mm. with making two short yeah. films, Oh Man and Why Not. So tell me about that journey and how did that enable you to move further? Why, how, how important were short films in your life? I think that's one thing I really wanted to make. Uh, and even before, and I've, I've been in advertising before that and um, my immediate uh, aim was to be an ad filmmaker. But I said again, someone else's money, someone else's risk, not going to take. So I feel quite responsible in that sense. So I'm very good in production also. <laughs> uh, and so I wanted to make a short film to test it out whether I have it in me. I don't want to just like for someone to, you know, test it out. And but you had already been making ads. No, I wasn't. No. So it this first was much came the short film. Ah. That's how it is. First the short film, that became my reel for my first ad film. Yeah, so I made that in New York. And uh, it did really well. It was uh, screened at the Berlin International Film Festival. And so that gave me a great boost, great confidence, I think, which is why I insist on young people to first try that. You'll know what you're good at. And suppose you even set out as a filmmaker, you'll realize maybe not, maybe cinematographer, maybe lighting, costume. There are a hundred things. Everyone doesn't have to be 
so yeah so that's how it was and after that i got my first ad film to shoot and then it just started and, and why not came somewhere in the middle of that and why did you then in the middle of the ads go back to a short film uh that was actually it was a short film idea in an advertising agency so it was for a social cause and then you know it was a little longer format and we didn't have digital yeah. then yeah. so then i just uh, sort of also turned into short film along with the i mean i decided with the writer that yeah are you okay with this and and then i screened it screened that at festivals also tell me with the first one what was the biggest hurdle and how did you overcome it oh um, how old were you No I was much older I was like 27 26 then because it was I had already started working no, like I No I meant for the first short film Yeah okay so it was in between my work right. I had already worked as a copywriter and a film executive in Lintas and all of that and it took a sabbatical I to went make to the New short. York yeah yeah no I did a short course in right. filmmaking and huh. that's when this was part of that project mm. and uh, the only hurdle was finding the right crew and even then I was like so um finicky about getting the right people <laughs> uh because it already also worked as a film executive so i had a sense of who's good at what and to pick people and all of that so when i found an amazing uh, italian woman dop and i uh, yeah and so i somehow found actors i did my own casting and reached out to people and there was like not that much email uh, situation even then and there was no facebook or nothing so those were a few hurdles to get the team together and yeah that's all and then Luckily, as students, we had the uh, we could get locations, and yeah. you know it was yeah. yeah. And that told you what you could do, what you couldn't do, yeah. and yeah. set you on the path. Yeah. yeah, and wrote my script for that even so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Corey, the two films you made, they both have um, women finding their way <clears throat> through their lives, and and the first uh, does it. through the learning the english language yeah. the second protagonist does it uh, through therapy are you organically sort of more attracted to women stories perhaps i don't know i mean about the future but this is something i mean uh, the subjects actually are something i'm drawn to it's also your own mental makeup and what you have absorbed through life and that's the stories that are coming out now they're coming out from the point of view of a woman and uh, i think it's purely actually i feel sometimes fe- female narrative may be misinterpreted i mean it's actually it's probably the, the right female way. gaze right. because i would even look at men or women with a female gaze yeah. so it's not necessarily a female or may not be necessarily a female narrative but something that i the way i am looking at at those it's things it's a point of view it's a point of view yeah. right yeah right. and maybe women stories haven't been said and i want to do subjects that haven't been talked about or haven't been really uh captured mm. so somehow automatically that comes because i don't want to do what's already been done and just say more about the same thing yeah, <laughs> yeah. but you've also been very clear gori that you're not a flag bearer for feminism uh <clears throat> you've said repeatedly in interviews that you know i'm going to put what I feel um out there and if it's a statement good but that's yeah, not yeah. my sort of primary ambition is it frustrating um sometimes to just have this pressure where people just expect you to want to tell women stories I have not felt the pressure of that at all that if someone's expecting or even with other women directors I think it's not the pressure but maybe people are expecting and probably the industry or even the audience that uh, because you've done possibly one genre and especially with me there was only women empowerment stories if at all they came to me which is why it didn't interest me right. <laughs> so much because right. it was also not about the interior world it's not about oh i became uh it's a very external it's a very external sort of performative yeah absolutely yes. uh, yeah. like you know like the best sportsmen or whatever which are great stories i for me it's the interior world that attracts me draws me more yeah. so um, and yeah gender some is not my main concern i think to do good work is my main concern because it's a very restrictive lens to look look at you know if it's just about gender i think the human mind and the human state is so much interesting and its imperfections and inadequacies that's what interests that's what interests me much more i'm very curious about the the world and it happens to be sometimes about women but even about men so in some ways uh, even in dear zindagi it was a little bit about jahangir khan of as course. well yeah. and what he is uh, feeling and his own <laughs> yeah. sort of issues yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. tell so. me what what do you 
find uh, how do you find inspiration and how do you find you know you talked about finding your voice again um so when you're not making a movie um uh, how does that feeling come that <clears throat> you know this is it this inspires me this is what i want to spend my next 2 3 years with um i mean it's a marriage right absolutely absolutely very committed one <laughs> <laughs> you can't divorce yeah, it i no. mean it would be very very problematic no it would be very sad it would be very sad yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. and i'd need like extra therapy right if i had to so <laughs> right. um i think like in a very boring way like i think check off said it or something that lie if you want to work on your art work on your life and uh, like i think life inspires me so which is why that break and which is why i just need to i mean what inspires me is general life and which you may not get necessarily in a filmmaker's office if you're right. there day in and day out and right. that's all you're doing and script and this and meeting film people and just staying in that it's very incestuous it's it is and also it's very restricting so if for the mind to really so i for me it's that and it could be any anything you know it could be a debate that can spark off something between people like either you're watching one or having one or being part of a screaming argument or something and you realize what your beliefs are mm -hmm. somewhere there in that little vein mm -hmm. or in the chaos of life or in the silence of it right. so somewhere in your travels or even if you watch something or read something and there could be something that sparks off something else and say oh my god like you know this is within that scene and within that one line somebody said and it could spark off something but then you know in your gut i know in my gut this is it yeah and with the one the two that you made before was there ever any uh, any doubt once you had decided or or once you know it's just absolute clarity so i do go through it looks like clarity from a distance and after a while but what i go through is turmoil huh. <laughs> correct tell me about that yeah, what is the so turmoil of a storyteller there is that one day okay that, or that one moment that feels like oh my god i got it and i'll make that call to my best friend and to my husband there are two people who i those are the first calls yeah first calls and i have this and then i'm very insecure sharing it with anybody else beyond that point and at that point and then i live with it for a day and i'm like oh my god i'm so great and i'm so happy that i found this and then i'd probably not even think about it and go out to have a drink or a coffee with someone and then and then i wake up the next day and if it's still with me and then it's it's great and i just feel yeah this is fresh then this you is know. new then i if know it, it is then the turmoil starts <laughs> oh that oh my god but what can i do with this and this is just a two liner then i start to write a synopsis to at least create something and then it's a lot of frustration before i pen uh, finger to laptop happens <laughs> yeah <laughs> what do you like on set me. are you are you tough are you a screamer do you ask this to male director of course yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not a screamer i would like to in my head you want so to be tough you want to scream so many times for so many things but no i think that would just ruin the atmosphere and i'm actually very very patient while making a film because and that's only time i'm patient in real life <laughs> i think that's why this happens because i'm so patient throughout the making that i you know i can't deal with real life uh, at whatever it's pace <laughs> sometimes but no i don't like to because um I think you need that grit that uh, that perseverance to get it right and for me getting it right is so much more important that I don't want to move on if I'm not happy with yeah. at, at a shoot or writing or pre-production or post even so do you like storyboard no only for ad films you've done more than 100 right yeah 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 and has that grammar cory really helped you to you know figure out how you want to tell narratives in the long form for sure the craft has helped me i feel advertising as a huge um, i have to thank my training there for the craft for sure and not just the, yeah overall the craft like uh, just dealing with actors just how to tell a story in 30 seconds to 10 to 20 seconds i think that really helps and to just go through the process and i feel at least for me and i always tell this to all my assistants and all also that just do more on your own before you want to jump onto a feature film 
you right. know don't start like that because you know you'll know what your things are so you go in more confident if you go yeah. on to a bigger format just experiment do short films do anything right. do something on your own now you can even shoot something on your phone yeah. and edit it and at least you know the process mm -hmm. from a thought to an edit and what you're lacking and yeah. so i think this really helped i don't think i would have been able to or had the confidence to jump on to a feature without this background you asked me if i ask male directors this you also said gori that when men are screamers on yeah, set when yeah. when they are loud when they are aggressive they're seen as eccentric or uh, you know just very passionate artists uh, but when women do that um, you know they're seen as difficult or or they're just seen as over aggressive how do you deal and these are just small things there's many yeah, many yeah, levels of yeah, double standards yeah, yeah. in entertainment yeah. uh, how do you deal with it do you just sort of like you said put your blinkers on like you do in, when you're making a film and just say no my job is to get the yeah. film made yeah. and i'm going to ignore all this how do you actually deal with it yeah absolutely like you said because there's no time to deal with that at that moment and if you do have like in a pre production stage you just continue to be assertive so we don't even have to scream as women right or shout to be called Right. Um, you don't have to get there. Just being assertive is bad enough for men. <laughs> <Right. laughs> how does a woman know her mind, and how yeah. did, how is she so confident, and how is she saying what she needs? Yeah. I mean, I got to help her, or you know, uh, right. <laughs> right. Right. I need to solve this problem, but I'm solving it for you. You know, it's very. Uh, what do you say? It's very uh, delicate, yeah. and it's very fine. You know these the uh, things between. It's the interaction. It's the you interaction. You know, Zoya had told me that when I she was, was making Last Zoya. by Chance. <laughs> Uh, there was, I think, a key grip or somebody on yeah. the camera unit who would keep looking at Farhan mm. to get the shot. Okay, and she said she walked up to him and said, "But I'm the director. He's yeah. an actor here." Yeah. And and uh, you know, he she said he immediately came back with, "No, no, no. I didn't mean any disrespect. You're like my sister." And she said, <laughs> you just "Have to be like a sister <laughs> yeah. to she behave said, better." No, no. Let's get this clear. I'm not your sister. I'm your director. Well said. You know, so she, have you had those moments? No, like Zoya and me were talking recently, and she said in some interview she got asked, "Are you uh, bossy?" And she's like, "Do you all ask this to male directors?" I'm right. of the boss. I am the boss. I'm the boss, right. so I have to be one. What do you mean by are you bossy? <laughs> like, how, how are you supposed to be? <laughs> Yeah, I'm just a timid boss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, is it is it true that uh, you saw Hero and fell in love with Jackie Shroff at 13? Oh, I said this in. <laughs> So random. Is it? Because yeah, did, yeah, no. What yeah. I wanted to ask. Yeah. He sorry. was no, no. He was amazing. Uh, uh, did you? Did Hindi cinema play a big role in your growing up years? Not so much. Which is why there was just very f few that we went out for. Like my dad would buy the tickets once in a way or whatever. And um, and yeah, Hero was distinctly there. And there's this another film that I'll talk about was Jawani. And I really love Neelam. And that's so I was a kid and I loved this. Suddenly there was a little modern looking right. heroine, right. and I it somehow resonated with what I wanted to be or whatever. And yeah, and Jackie Shroff again looked very unconventional with his slightly light hair and light eyes, and there was something really sexy about he him was. in that he was film. He was very and sexy, and yeah. Someone growing up, in sort of the rogue who yeah, kidnaps, yeah, and yeah. that little uh, stubble. And I don't know, the overall thing was really great. And then him playing that flute and that song still play, can play in your head, which was really lovely. So it was random, but otherwise, no, not so much. Actually, so making movies was never an ambition in that never, sense. Never, never. In fact, we watched a lot of Marathi theatre in my family. We, my like, uh, the first film as a really small kid, my dad took me was Sound of Music, and there were a lot of these English thing like three uh, goodies and all these weird things that came on TV. I was watching along with uh, Yeju His Zindagi and stuff, and then so it was distinct. All this, this, and 4G. So that was the intro to Shah Rukh Khan. So yes, maybe that was my sense of uh, Bollywood when he turned into Bollywood. But and otherwise, not so much. Okay, and before we let you go, tell me, Kori, what are your mantras? What would be your advice to all the aspiring filmmakers out there? Um, and now you know, short films have become a sort of stepping stone that that a lot of people mm. take mm. before they get into features. What would be your advice to all these people? Oh, I hate giving advice because it's not okay. so much even I know of But that I can. But what has helped you? What are things that have? What are tools yeah, that have yeah. helped you? Without sounding patronizing, and I feel I need to say that as a pre, <laughs> is um, I think um, 
all of us are unique and i would say to the young student or the young aspirant like no one's you you know no one is you so that is your power so find your voice before you find your way into uh, the world of film or whatever and have that unique voice because if you don't have that and if you just want to do what and follow or be influenced by existing things then it's it's not going to take you that far so to be original have your voice find it and it you find it anywhere and to not be influenced be inspired yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't wait to see what you do next gori thank you so much thank you thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you.